Hi, and welcome back to another video with It's Dr. Dan, and today we're going to be looking at molarity. So molarity is the concept that you need to know to pass chemistry. And the big thing what this has to do with is how to make solutions, meaning how do different chemicals appear in the aqueous phase? Or if we have an amount of solute mixed with a solvent, and you are probably like, what are a lot of these words? Well, the big thing here is that we're just trying to figure out what the concentration is of a solution. So if we go down to, let's say, if you're in lab and you're trying to make a solution, so how do you exactly do that? Generally, you are mixing different ingredients. So let's say, for example, if we take a solute, such as just common sodium chloride or table salt, and we throw that into water. So if we throw that into water, that is labeled as the solvent. And the reason why these two are labeled this way, the solute is always referred to as the minor component, and the solvent is the major component, or whatever the whatever is most uh, was contained the most here. So if we have our little vol flask over here, and we have that NaCl is going to dissociate; it's going to be soluble, which we talked about in a previous video regarding solubility. So if we take sodium chloride, it's going to break down into its two individual ions here. So we have Na plus and Cl minus. Now, how do we report this in the form of concentration? Well, this is where molarity is going to come in. So molarity in this case is referred to as the following. So when we see molarity, it's always written as big M. So it's molarity, and that's going to be big M. And now the units for molarity, so if we have something like this dissociation here, well, if we read this like a chemical formula, right, we have that one mole of NaCl is dissociating to one mole of sodium plus and one mole of chlorine. So what better way to represent a concentration than by moles? Now, so what we will represent this is gonna be moles of our solute over the volume of our solvent. Okay, so moles over volume. Now, being that this is a volume, this has to be in liters. So if we have our volumetric blast that we're making our solution in, that's gonna be in liters whereas our solute, this is gonna be moles of our solute. Now, whenever we have this, so being that this is a sodium chloride, one, another way for us to represent this, which is a very important nomencl or nomenclature for us, is square brackets. So if we have a square bracket around, let's say, NaCl, this is referring to the concentration of NaCl, aka the molarity. So that's concentration, so that's moles. So that could be moles of NaCl for every liter of NaCl. Or sorry, liter of water in this case, being that that's our solvent. So moles of NaCl is a solute over liters of water as our sol solvent. Okay, so solute and solvent. Solute, solvent. Now, being with that said, let's try a couple practice problems putting this into place. So that way we can see how exactly we're going to be using this as a formula for ourselves. So if I ask you the following one, what is the molarity of a solution prepared with 125 grams of sodium chloride and 250 milliliters of water? So with this, right, we have to identify all the important pieces of information. So if we look at this quickly, we can see, okay, we, we have 125 grams of solution here. So that's going to be one piece of information. Then we also have 250 milliliters of water. So when we are doing this, we need to be able to label, okay, what is the solute? What is the solvent? Now, in 99% of your situations, water is most likely going to be your solvent in general chemistry. So this one here is going to be our solvent, which is going to be in the denominator, and this will be our solute. Now I wrote this out into simple steps how we can do these problems. 
So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to convert the mass to moles. Being that molarity, if you remember, is moles over liters. So we need to plug in our different components. So if we take that 125 grams of NaCl, we're going to once again do a little conversion tool for ourselves. We're going to set this up like a T table. So we will write, have that written out for ourselves. Now, in order to cancel our grams, what is always the step to do that? So if you can kind of remember with every one of these, right, if you're going to be converting mass to moles, in order to do that, we need to use molar mass to do that conversion. So this is something that involves a lot of stoichiometry when you are trying to solve for molarity. So we will look up the molar mass for sodium chloride. And after you look that up, you'll see that one mole of sodium chloride is equivalent to 58.44 grams of NaCl. And that is taking that directly from your periodic table. Now, grams of NaCl cancels grams of NaCl. So those two things are going to cancel as a result, leaving us only with moles. So when we solve that, we will see that we have 2.14 moles of NaCl, which is going to be plugged in eventually to our molar formula as the solute. Okay but we're not done yet. Before we can plug that in, we have to convert volume to liters, being that we started this problem with 250 milliliters of water, we must convert this. So going back to our dimensional analysis, we can easily convert to this from 250 milliliters of water to liters. So we have to look up what is that conversion from liters to milliliters, and one thing you might be able to remember is that 1,000 milliliters is one liter. So milliliters will be canceled. And that will leave us only with liters of water as a result. So 250 divided by 1,000. And that's going to give you 0 0.250 liters of water. All right. So now that we have these two pieces of information, the next thing we're going to do is calculate molarity. So how do we do that? Well, if you remember, just to write down the formula again, molarity was moles of solute over the volume of solvent, so which is equal to M. Now, we want to know what the concentration is of sodium chloride. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in all those individual pieces. We had 2.14 moles of sodium chloride and 0 0.250 liters of water. So we'll take both those numbers and we're going to pretty much plug these in like it is just a normal formula like you have from gas laws or from any other part of the class like or heat or energy to do this conversion. All right. So now I have that 0.214 moles of sodium chloride over 0 0.250 liters. And this is going to be a very quick division for ourselves. And we will get that 8.56 molar NaCl, which you can also represent saying that this is in square brackets for sodium chloride, which is our answer for this example. Now let's try to do another one. There's a couple of different scenarios where this can be shown. So let's try to do another. So what if I ask you the following? What is the concentration of hydroxide from barium hydroxide if 75.2 grams is added to 500 liters of water? Okay, what does that refer to? Well, acid base chemistry is a very big part of concentrations and solutions. So, if we are to have this, we need to first understand what is the chemical formula look like when it's added to water? How does the solubility work? So if I take barium hydroxide and I add that to water, how is it going to break down into its most basic ions? How is the cations and the anions going to be breaking apart? So the first thing is, is that I have one barium ion, so Ba2+, and then two hydroxide ions that are going to be breaking apart as a result, and don't forget that that subscript here gets turned into a coefficient, 
So being showing that we're breaking it down into all of its ions. When that happens, one thing that we're going to be doing now is just writing out our conversion. So we need to go from mass of barium hydroxide to moles of hydroxide. So we have to do a few steps of our conversion. So the first thing is, is whenever we convert from mass, we need to cancel out the units. So how would we exactly do that? Well, and bridge that gap to moles, well, we would use the molar mass. So we always write out our units like a plan for ourselves. So that way we can see, all right, this is, this is the steps I need to take. So grams of barium hydroxide will cancel out grams of barium hydroxide. Now we need to look up our molar mass for barium hydroxide. And after you calculate that, so for one barium, two oxygens, two hydrogens, what we're going to be getting is 171.34 grams for every one mole of barium hydroxide. Now we're not done yet though. We have to now calculate how much hydroxide, which this is where it comes from our solubility equation. There are two moles of hydroxide for every one mole of barium hydroxide molecule here. So when we do this, we're gonna take 75.2, divide it by 171.34 times two, and what we are going to get for our final numbers is 0 0.878 moles of hydroxide. So this is telling you how much base equivalent you have in solution or how much hydroxide is ready to react here. Now, what we're now gonna do is convert volume once again to liters, right? We wanna be able to plug all these individual components into molarity. So we had 500, uh, 500 milliliters in the original problem, and I realize I wrote liters by accident, so 500 milliliters, that'd be a lot of liquid. So if we have that 500 milliliters, we'll convert that once again to liters. So 1,000 milliliters is equivalent to one liter. Milliliters is going to be canceling out. And what we're going to be left with is 0 0.500 liters and we keep our sig figs. So now that we have both of these numbers, what are these representing? Well, this is our solute, this is our solvent, and now we're going to be putting them into our molarity equation for our last step. So just a kind of a little reminder, right? We want to figure out the concentration of hydroxide. That's going to be moles of hydroxide all over the liters of water, okay? So being that we have our moles of hydroxide, that's gonna, that was our first number we calculated, which was 0 0.878 moles of hydroxide, all divided by 0 0.500 liters of water. So when that is all said and done, we will have 1.76 molar of hydroxide, and we could also represent that in square brackets as well. And just show it this way, which this would be our final answer. Okay. So if I ask you one more problem, let's say if we wanted to do a different type, let's say you wanted to make a solution, which is a very common thing that you have to do in a general chemistry lab. So if I asked you how many grams of sodium nitrate are required to make a 250 milliliter solution that is 2.14 molar, how would you do it? So being that we want to make a solution, how are we going to go about that? So the first thing is you need to figure out how much volume do you need of this? Do you want to make a liter, half a liter? What exactly are you doing? So I told you, all right, 250 milliliters. That's the first step. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert that to liters. So it'll be 250 divided by 1,000 times 1 liter. And what that's going to convert that to is 0 0.250 liters. Now, why do we care about that? Well, in order to convert molarity to moles, we need liters. So being that we have 2.14 molarity as our term here, that also represents 2.14 moles 
all over one liter. So in order to calculate how much, how many moles we have, we have to multiply this by the, the amount of solution we have. So if I do this, where I take that 250 liters, cancel out those two units, we'll be left with only the amount of moles here. So it'll be 2.14 times 0.25. And what we are going to be getting is 0 0.535 moles of sodium nitrate. Now, does that give you your grams? Well, if you think back to stoichiometry, to go from moles to grams, we gotta use the molar mass again. So in this case, we'll do one last step of converting moles of sodium nitrate by timesing it by its molar mass. So the molar mass of sodium nitrate, once we kind of write that thing down, it's gonna be 84.997 grams of sodium nitrate. This is going to cancel out. So moles of sodium nitrate cancels moles of sodium nitrate, leaving us with our mass. So if you wanted to make this, you would need to add 45.47 grams of sodium nitrate to 250 milliliters of water to make this solution. So not only can you figure out the concentration of something, but you can also figure out what your mass is. So why is this important? So with my final send-off point, molarity is a conversion term, which is extremely powerful. So being that is said, if you go back to my solubility stoichiometry videos, this is painting a picture of how we can convert and predict things. So before when we went over stoichiometry, one of the big concepts was that we could go from mass to moles to moles to mass, right? So when we were looking at this entire picture, we could convert that. And that's what we did with a bunch of these previous examples. However, we can now bring in one more thing with solution chemistry, which is filling in the bottom part of this, is that, oh, if we have a volume of our solution, so if we have two test tubes of solution that we're mixing together, well, I can now take that volume of one of my reagents, convert it to moles, and now I can either convert it to a mass of my other reactants, or I can do my mole to mole ratio and get to my, a mass, get to a volume. It allows us to do more stoichiometry equations. So molarity here is a conversion term that can be used to our advantage. So keep that in mind. Molarity is something that can be used as a conversion term in order to get to volume of solutions. So this is for solution chemistry, and this is gonna be a future video where we go through a few examples doing this. So please, uh, please feel free to like and subscribe so you see when that video comes out in the next few weeks, and hopefully it'll, this helped you a little bit understand solution chemistry a little bit more. This has been Dr. Dan, and I hope to see you in, around for future videos. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Bye now. <laughs>